So to really understand floaters, here's a quick anatomy lesson of the eye. At the front here you have the cornea. It's the protective layer for the lens. And it works just like a window. You can see through it, but you're protected from the outside. Now behind the cornea is the lens. And the lens focuses the incoming light so you can see a sharp image. And behind the lens is then the vitreous body. It's filled with a vitreous gel that allows the eyeball to maintain its round shape. And at the very back here is the retina. It's the layer that has all the light receptors. Here your eye perceives the light information that is then sent down the optic nerve to the brain. And in the very center, just above the optic nerve, you have the macula. It's the area with the most light receptors that allows you to see a sharp and clear image in your central vision. So when light falls into your eye, your lens focuses the rays onto the retina. And floaters happen here in the vitreous body, just behind the lens. There are three basic types of floaters, so let's cover them one by one. The first type of floater is rare and is an emergency, so you'll need urgent medical attention if that happens to you. When there's a hemorrhage on your eyeball, blood streams into the vitreous gel. You'll see a stream of floaters going up or down, or it appears like a, a spider web rapidly all over your whole vision out of nowhere. If that happens to you, see a doctor immediately. But that's less than 1% of all floater patients. Now the other two types of floaters are considered harmless and normal, but that's not quite accurate. The second type of floaters is a little bit of a shadow. The shadow appears because of a protein in the vitreous gel clumping together or a cell that is floating in the vitreous gel. So as the light travels from your lens to your retina, that cell or protein clump throws a shadow. And it has to be pretty close to the retina and in the line of your sight for you to notice it, otherwise you just won't see it. That's the most common type of floater. And eye specialists say that it's normal and there's nothing you can do about it, but that's not really true because it's a starting point of something much, much bigger. A vital building block of your vitreous gel, an important protein starts to break down. And that doesn't just happen in your eyes, but it happens in almost every cell of your body. You either see clumps of protein sticking together or you see the cells of the debris of the protein molecules that are falling apart. Both are pretty serious issues for your overall health. Your floaters are just the first place that you can actually see that something is not right. But if you don't attend it, it can easily lead to the last type of floaters. When the protein continues to break down, it can cause the vitreous gel to shrink. That then leads to the vitreous body to contract and that causes the vitreous body to detach from your retina. This would cause a shadow in your periphery, as if there's a bug or an insect that appears in your periphery constantly. Again, a nice specialist would say that's normal and it's not a problem, but a vital building block of your body is breaking down. It's breaking down enough to cause vitreous detachment. So it's a serious warning sign that your health